Lord, everybody, why don't we all stand together, find somebody you can greet and welcome them to church on this wonderful Wednesday. I appreciate you all braving the cold. Amen. It looks like some others, maybe if you're watching and you're in your cozy living room or in the car out there with the heater on, uh, I want to tell you, we got some heat inside the sanctuary too, so if you want to come on to church, come on in, we'll have a good time together. And the church said amen. Amen. But it is good to see everyone here tonight. 
Amen. What a great time we had here Sunday morning. Sunday night, my goodness, our Brother Harold has really blessed us with the word. And I told him every church, I was like, Brother, you preaching stuff. We've been talking about these last few weeks. Amen. It's amazing how God has a way of working it. And God has a way of orchestrating, amen, what he wants to get across to his people. And I'm so thankful to be a part of the church, aren't you? Amen. Can we just open tonight with a good hand clap of praise and maybe lift our voice and just thank him? Come on, we serve a great God. He has a great name. Thank you, Jesus. As morning dawns and evening fades, you inspire songs of praise that rise. blessing over our food and it's in his name that we baptize praise God because the power is in that name it's not in the person doing the baptizing it's not in the water but there's something about the name of Jesus that's able to save the worst sinner doesn't matter what somebody's past is doesn't matter what somebody used to be Amen. That old man gets buried, and that name just takes it and just says, let's, let's put this in the sea of forgetfulness. Amen. And there's nobody that can resurrect that, na- that man or woman that's been buried in the name except for that individual that says, you know what, I want to go back to my old ways. And I'll... Amen. So you and I, we don't ever have to go back to that old life. Amen. Because of the power that's in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. We want to remember Brother Randy Henry. He's not doing well and he's wanting prayer tonight. Also, I'm glad she's able to be here, uh, but Tanisha's wanting prayer tonight and need prayer in her body. And uh, we want to continue praying for uh, the pounds that God will touch them. Amen. 
Elizabeth Kirkland. Continue praying for her. Special unspoken in her life. Also, Brother Joe White's family that needs a special touch. His mom and dad uh, need a touch from the Lord in their life and their bodies. We, we uh, are trusting God to do that. Continue praying for Sister Jessica Bourne to have a re good recovery. And also, uh, Sister Shirley Isbell, we want to continue praying for her and, and Brother Bill as well. Amen. Brother Bill needs a touch of the Lord in his body, and we're going to just believe for healing. Amen. But I'm glad to come to church tonight. Amen. Praise God. It's, it's always good to see people at church, and you know that they could so easily be at home because they got an excuse to be there. Amen. But to, to press on and come on to the house of the Lord, I, I applaud you. Thank you so much. I had several here tonight that, amen, you got excuse to be home if we just look at excuses, but you're in the house of the Lord. And so I want to say thank you so much for being faithful to the house of the Lord. Amen. We pray that the presence of the Lord touches you and ministers to you tonight. Uh, also, uh, Mike Hopkins, we want to continue lifting him, him up in prayer, Brother Lindley. And uh, Sister Ellen Allen, we want to continue praying for her as well as others that aren't able to be at church, amen, because of being in uh, long-term care facilities or because of sickness in their body, in Jesus' name. Anybody else have a spoken request tonight, Brother Young? Yes, sir. sister amen sister cooper yes ma'am sister bennett yes ma'am it's good to see you amen casey yes ma'am amen brother jordan Amen. And I am, I know it's flu season. We got all this stuff going on, but amen. I'm ready to kick Corona to the curb. Can somebody say amen? I'm ready to kick the effects of it to the curb. Amen. We're ready to close out 2020 and open up 2021 and just let this be behind us. And hopefully we'll get some good news. I know they said something about a vaccine. I know different opinions on that. And I'm not trying to open up a can of worms by mentioning that. Amen. But I, I believe that, amen, that we need to be wise. And the church said amen. And we need to be diligent. And so but we are uh, just believing God's going to uh, help get this behind us uh, this, as we enter to this time, uh, as we close this year and open up a new year. Amen. But I, I want to, I don't want to just look at it and say, you know what, it just kind of is what it is because this, this last several months have been crazy. Anybody recognize that? Anybody just kind of seem like this has been a little different? Uh, it has been different. It's been different on people's jobs and, and for church and services. Amen. And people coming to the house of the Lord. It's all been different. Amen. But I, I want us to end 2020. I know we want to get it out of here, but I want us to end it strong. Amen. And I believe we can do that, not just with attendance, not just with giving, but with our spirits and our faith being high. We talked about it Sunday. We don't need to doubt. Amen. We need to let our faith get elevated amen as we take these knees before the lord tonight we need to pray with faith and knowing that god is able without any doubt somebody say without doubt amen there's no benefit in doubt and the church said amen amen god we love you so much thank you lord for your goodness thank you for your presence it's in this place tonight god, i thank you lord for these brave saints lord that have come out in this cold weather god i pray lord that you would minister to this body tonight god those that may be watching tonight lord go into their living room or wherever they are god let your presence be felt let it be known god let your word speak to us tonight now we're standing on your promises lord and we're declaring healing lord over these needs that have been mentioned tonight because you are a healer you are a provider god and there is power that's in your name so lord let's say like this up on the authority of your name for your name's sake, God, we claim healing. God, we claim deliverance tonight. God, because of who you are, Lord, we can stand on your word and we can declare it and proclaim it with boldness. Help us to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. And can anybody say tonight, God's been good to you? Amen. Let's sing about it.
somebody say amen. Amen. You can be seated if you like. Amen. Brother Jordan McVeigh is going to come right now and share with us a ministry minute. Amen. Oh, we love Brother Jordan, Sister Emily. Amen. All they do for our church and for the kingdom. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As they were singing that song, I couldn't help but think that I haven't always been the perfect angel you all know me to be. <laughs> well, so maybe I'm still not a perfect angel, but God really has been good to me. I think back over my life, and I'm so thankful for a apostolic heritage. I'm so thankful for apostolic generations ahead of me. I'm so thankful for praying knees. I'm so thankful that I've had somebody in my life that has called out to the Lord on my behalf several times. He has just been so good to me. That's not what I want to talk about tonight, but I just, I, I can't help but think about how, how, how much he's delivered me from and, and how I don't have to talk the same way that I used to talk and I don't have to think the same way that I used to think and I don't have to, to go the same places that I used to go to because I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My, my, my. God is so good. Uh, I, I'm, I want to go to Genesis chapter number 28, verse number 16. Um, I, I really didn't know this was, this was going to be for, for Sunday morning, and I, I, I wasn't ready at the time, and I, I, I got up a little early, um, and sat on the edge of the bed after after my shower and everything and I just began to seek after the Lord for some direction and I feel like he directed me to to this scripture Genesis chapter 28 verse number 16 says and Jacob awaked out of his sleep and he said surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not I don't have a I don't have a title for this per se, but as I sat there and I, I began to ponder on, on this scripture for a little while, I, I couldn't help but, but just begin to cry out to God because I never want to be found guilty that I am asleep when God is moving. I, I don't want it to be too late and I wake up and say God was here and I knew it not. And I believe that the Lord is calling for a spiritually woke generation. A church that is well aware that the Lord is moving, that the Lord is here, that the Lord is in this place. It said, And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. I don't know. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you expected to get out of tonight's service. But can I tell you that these, this is the end days. These are the last moments. And it's time to awaken out of your slumber, saint of God. It's time to awaken out of your slumber, child of God. Because the, God, the Lord is in this place. Verse 17 said, and he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put for his pillows, and he set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. What Jacob did after he had realized that the Lord was in that place, he took the situation that he was in, he took the slumber, he took the situation that caused him to miss that God had been moving and working around him, and he made a pillar of it. He made a reminder for himself, and I, I'm not saying to look back on the past and, and to think of how, how great the past was, but it, it's a reminder for what God has brought you through and what God has brought you from. And I just, with a heavy heart, want us to be awakened 
before it's too late. Can we just worship the Lord for a moment right now? Come on, can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now? I don't know about you, but I'm thankful God gives us opportunities to turn those things around. So we can take those things that we used to lay our heads on and kind of be complacent with and take the pillows and turn them into a pillar in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, so good to have all of you here on a Wednesday night, and uh, we are going to be continuing our Soul Killer series tonight, and we're going to be talking about a subject that, um, that in our generation today, when I say our generation, in my my generation, that's kind of one of those things where it's there, but nobody wants to say it's there. Uh, but we're going to get through it tonight, and I hope it's going to help us, not just us that are here, but those that are watching, those that may watch later. And, and I know it'll help make us a stronger, amen, Christian for it. Numbers chapter 27, verse number 12. As you're turning there, let me just remind us, tomorrow night we have quiz and practice at 630. And then this Sunday service, we have our 10 o'clock service only, no p.m. service Sunday and then we won't have service next Wednesday night uh, either. And so uh, we invite you to come. Bring somebody with you Sunday. It's going to be a special service. And then I will tell you this, on Sunday the 27th, uh, it's going to be a special service. I believe the Lord has given me a word for us, amen, for that service. And I'm just, uh, I'm hoping that I can wait to give it to them. But just in, the, in my spirit, just what he shared with me, what he gave to me, um, I, I feel like it needs to be the last Sunday because of the way we started the year, and uh, and I, I believe the Lord's going to help us, uh, help us with that. Numbers chapter twenty-seven, uh, verse number twelve. Uh, also, while I'm thinking about it, I think our fundraising things came in. So if my wife hasn't already seen you, if you ordered some of those Scentsy things, uh, I believe she has that to hand out tonight. So be sure to get with her before you leave. Amen. Again, thank you for helping us do that. I think we raised five hundred and sixty something dollars on that that little fundraiser just in a short amount of time. So thank you so much for helping us do that for our quizzers. Numbers chapter twenty seven, verse number twelve. And the Lord said unto Moses, Get thee up into this mount Abram, and see the land which I have given unto the children of Israel. And when thou hast seen it. Thou also shalt be gathered unto thy people as Aaron, thy brother, was gathered. And verse 14 is where it kind of gets into what we're going to talk about. Uh, For ye rebelled, everybody say rebelled, against my commandment in the desert of Zin. In the strife of the congregation, he said to sanctify me at the water before their eyes. That is the water of Meribah and Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin. Verse 15, Moses spake unto the Lord, saying, let the Lord, thy, the God of, thy, of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation, which may go out, verse 17 says, before them, and which may go in before them, and which may lead them out, and which may bring them in, and the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd. Amen. God doesn't want us just wandering. Amen. Uh, but he wants us to be led. He wants all of us to be led. He wants us to, to have direction in our life. How many of you would rather, if you're going somewhere, you want direction? Uh, and so I believe the Lord wants us to have that. We're going to talk about uh, soul killers again tonight. We'll just call this part number four. If you're going to help me, you can be seated. And we will do more teaching tonight than anything. And, uh, and I, I, again, want to say thank you for being at church tonight for Bible study. And midweeks does still matter. Coming together with God's people still matter. Uh, can anybody tell me the first soul killer we talked about? Jealousy. What was the next one? Murmuring and complaining. What was the one we talked about Sunday? Doubt. And so tonight we're going to talk about the spirit of rebellion. Uh, again, I said my generation, I, I, I know a little bit about this because I kind of live in it and had to deal with it. Uh, you know, the generation before me, uh, they don't uh, know much about 
I, I, I should say they understand. Uh, I don't want to mistalk tonight or misspeak tonight, uh, but there's something about my generation and the generation after me especially that this is something that really needs to be addressed uh, because it's a spirit that is getting inside of people in our world for sure, but it's making its way into the church. And uh, so if, if we're not careful, these things, remember we talked about just because you're not possessed by a spirit doesn't mean that it doesn't have an impact in your life. If you let it attach itself to you, even though you may not be a quote-unquote spirit-possessed person, it can make an impact and have an effect in the way that you live your life and the way you make decisions and the way that, that you lead or that you follow. Uh, it all comes down to what kind of spirit is leading us because we know that the spirit of God is what we want to lead us. But if there's not a spirit of discernment working in us, then if we're not careful, we'll be sidetracked by a familiar spirit. All right. And so I want us to look at this. So we talked, we said jealousy was the first one, murmuring and complaining and then doubt. And I know we're going to talk about rebellion tonight. But if we follow the, each of these that we've talked about so far, jealousy will lead us to murmur and complain. And then that murmuring and complaining because we're speaking all that negative stuff, it will lead us to doubt and unbelief. Again, because there is power in what we say not just verbally, but even in what we think. There is power. That's why the Bible instructs us on what to even think about. Because our thoughts are powerful. And, and, and if we let doubt and unbelief come in, then that is where we will actively rebel against the Word of God and the ways of God. And so it's a progression. And so if we go all the way back to Genesis, Adam and Eve, they doubted the Word of God. And that led them to rebelling against the word of God. It started out as something innocent. Started out as a conversation with the serpent. Now we, we know that's the devil, but I mean in the beginning when it's just Adam and Eve, it's just a serpent. This is to them, it's a snake, it's a serpent. And, and so Eve's having this conversation with the serpent, and what he gets her to do is he gets her to question the word of God. And God had told them, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't partake in it. Because in the day you partake in it, you're, you're going to die. And yet when Eve's having this conversation with the serpent, she looks at him and the serpent says, uh, you're not going to die. And so he, she said, well, yeah, huh, because the Lord said, that if, if we eat of it or even touch it, we're going to die. And at that moment in that conversation, because she wasn't familiar with the word of God and with really familiar with it, she, was, she, was, she kind of understood it, but because she wasn't in a place where she was confident with that word, that doubt all of a sudden gave the serpent a foothold in her to now not just affect her, but also Adam. And that doubt is what actually led to rebellion. Adam and Eve didn't get up that day saying they wanted to rebel against God. It's just there was a piece of a, their day. It was just a day. It was a part of their day where doubt was introduced. Then all of a sudden that doubt caused them to rebel against the spirit of God and against the word of God. And so that, that's why we call it a spirit. Rebellion is a spirit. And that's exactly what it is. Every, everything that God asks us to do, every commandment that God asks us to do, it is impossible for us to fulfill those commandments unless we make sure that a spirit of rebellion is not attached to our soul. Because how can we take up the cross and follow Jesus if there's rebellion there? How can we deny ourselves if we are preoccupied with making sure that we're propped up in every way possible? It's impossible, right? And so, again, our generation is experiencing, when I say our generation, not just my age group, but the, the, the time that we're living in right now, we are, we are in a day where it seems like we are progressing and there's something new coming out all the time. 
just in my lifetime. I remember the bag phone. I remember when Dad got a bag phone. We was working in sales, and, and he had a bag. And I, mean, I thought that was awesome. Y'all, some of y'all young ones don't even know what a bag phone is, but and but I remember that you got a cell phone and it, uh, I, you couldn't talk on it like you talk on the ones today because you'd end up getting a seven eight hundred dollar phone bill, but uh, it wasn't unlimited like it is now. Uh, but it's a progression. There's been all kind of improvements. I mean, it just goes from the I had one of those little big Nokia's that wasn't even a flip phone. It was just a big Nokia. Anybody remember those phones? It was a, uh, it wasn't quite that big, but it, it, it had, if you wanted to send a text message, you had to use the numbers <laughs> and spell it with the numbers. And, uh, and now you can just, you don't even got to type, you can just talk and it'll send it for you. My wife, she, she uses that talk to text. I was like, babe, you better be careful doing that. Uh, it'll mess you up. And it has a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey Amen. So if you ever get a crazy text from my wife, just know that the way she texts, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, is she does talk to text. And so uh, just, just so you know. And if I mess up, it's just because I got fat thumbs. Uh, but, but we got all kind of technological advancements that, that helps us live better. Right? But even amid, uh, amidst all these advancements and all this innovation that we have, at all this that was seen to make life better, and in some, some ways it does in the physical things, and you would think it would help us to be more innovative when it comes to our witness, and, when it, and we do that because we got Facebook. You can actually watch us live, and you don't have to record it on a VCR tape, and then, I mean, this is a pretty, pretty cool little deal. Amen. But the problem is, is that as we've advanced technologically and, and making our lives better in the physical, like right now in COVID, and again, we want people to be responsible and be safe, so don't misread what I'm trying to tell you. But right now, there's been all those, that, those few months where we couldn't come together in the sanctuary. It's caused us now we are months down the road where we came back to the sanctuary. And people are still comfortable just and feeling like they are fulfilled by just watching something on a computer screen or a phone. There's warfare. There is a spiritual warfare going on between light and darkness, and we may not can see it, but even in the church house tonight, amen, there are spiritual warfare going on to keep us from getting something from God or leaving without receiving anything from God, amen, because the enemy does not want anybody to grow in God, and so there's a battle to try to keep that, but in, in our day, look at what goes on around our world today, this, it's all kind of lack of order. We got people that don't respect the police. It's rebellion. Amen. And we got uh, even within in church, even within religion, the boundaries that that we have set up as protection, the word of God, the boundaries that the word of God puts around us as, as people that are trying to live a pleasing life to God. Those boundaries of what I, I call holiness. Nobody respects that anymore. It's called rebellion. We can do it another way. We can make it easier. And that's that. the, the word of God doesn't tell us that. The word of God just says, be holy for I am holy. And so we got a commandment to do that. But there is a rebellious spirit that would try to keep people from submitting and surrendering themselves to live a holy life. But if we're going to be the powerful vessels that God wants us to be, then we have to make sure that we cut away rebellion out of our spirit. So what is rebellion, Pastor Soden? Rebellion is defined as opposition to one in authority or dominance. He goes on to say an open, armed, and usually unsuccessful defiance of or resistance to an established government. Now, how does that apply to spiritual thing? Well, that definition I just read to you talking about government, well, in the spiritual rebellion, that government, that spirit of rebellion seeks to defy is the kingdom of God. God's word has a way that he wants us to approach our life. 
in every area. In the way that we submit to godly leadership. In the way that we submit to our husband and wives. In the way we submit to law and order. This word tells us how to live our life. Amen. But, but rebellion, when it gets into the heart of a person and starts being something that is against the kingdom of God, the word of God, the way of God, all that can be traced to two things. A work of the flesh or an activity of a demonic spirit. Everybody say flesh or demon. You say, well, I, I'm, I'm rebellious, and in some ways I don't, I don't know not to be. I'm, sometimes it, just, it seems like it just happens, but yet it's still rebellion. But here's the thing. Here's the reality. This is that big pill that we don't like to swallow sometimes. If we are being rebellious in ways that we don't want to be or whatever, it comes back again. It's one of two things. Either we're so carnally minded that we just act on our flesh and we we're so consumed with doing what our flesh wants that we have no desire to let the spirit of God speak to us or lead us or again what was the other one demonic spirit and so again what do you do pastor well if it's flesh then it's got to be crucified our flesh, we have to live a disciplined life in order to crucify our flesh. That's why Paul said, I die daily. But we got too many Christians, and I, I, we, let me just say it like this, we got too many apostolic people that we live our lives without any crucifying of our flesh. It's, it's, sad, it's true. We do. Uh, how many times have we had to, had to go through and, and, and have to deal with some things all of a sudden, and we realize, oh, my goodness, I, you know, when's the last time I really put that under the blood? And the devil's trying to use some things from our past maybe or, or use some, some anger, get you thinking about some things that's happened in your life, and let a nasty spirit come up. And it's usually on Sunday when you're trying to get ready for church or when you're already at church. I want a wind, cold Wednesday night when you're here and say, Lord, I hope that pastor helped. We don't preach long tonight. I'm ready to get back to the house. Well, that's a good place, Sister Brenda said, amen. Uh, but I told you Sunday, I didn't make any promises about tonight, just for the record. I said Sunday was going to be short. I didn't say nothing about a short one today. So... They're having a youth Christmas party upstairs. They need plenty of time to do a lesson at a party, so I'm going to give it to them. So they, they need at least a couple hours, so we're going we're gonna to get through it to, to get to, through it together. Uh, but, <laughs> Lord and mercy. So this, this rebellion, if it's a work of the flesh, we've got to crucify our flesh, right? With, if, if it's a matter of the flesh, we crucify it. If it's a matter of a spirit, then we cast it out. But the problem comes in whenever we try to do this, whenever we are trying to cast out our flesh and crucify spirit. Let me just say it like this. We can't kill the devil. You can't kill the devil. God didn't give you power to kill the devil. Listen to what he gave us power to do. Resist the devil. And what is greater, killing him or the power to resist him, to know that he can come against me with everything he's got, and yet it don't have to hinder me? Talk about a, a life of building faith. If you approach your enemy knowing that he doesn't have any power, any authority over you, amen, then that right there will give you some Something that will cast out doubt in you and let your faith be built up. Amen. But we got to be careful that we don't try to crucify the devil and cast out our flesh. Whenever God says that we're supposed to crucify our flesh and cast out devils. 
And the church said, Amen. But this spirit of rebellion, everybody say rebellion. It, it don't like any kind of authority. If you're a student, it don't like the teacher. If you're a saint, it don't like the pastor. It's rebellion. Everybody say rebellion. It wants to do what it wants to do without anybody telling it it's wrong. Everybody say rebellion. It wants to destroy you, and it will do just that if we don't get it out of our life. Amen? And here's something I want to just pause right here in the middle of this lesson and tell us, remind us that any rebellious person can repent and receive forgiveness and deliverance. I said any rebellious person can repent and receive deliverance. Amen. And the church said amen. Uh, another thing I want to talk to us about, about rebellion. Rebellion usually doesn't just all of a sudden appear. It's usually a progressive thing. It isn't just like a person just wakes up and says, hey, I'm, I'm rebellious today. No, it's a lot of times it unknowingly to the person develops whenever a person is not keeping watch over their spirit, over their life, over their relationship with God. And that's why it's important to be in the house of God. That's why preaching is so important. That's why Sunday morning service is so important. That's why Sunday night service is so important. That's why midweek, and I still say it, midweek still matters. Because God uses the church and God uses the preaching of the word of God. He uses these things to convict us and give us an opportunity to repent. And when we truly repent, then guess what happens? Look at your neighbor and say, we change. And so that's why when somebody stop, starts being unfaithful to church, it's a sign of rebellion. Everybody say a sign. Or if the devil can get somebody at odds with leadership in the church, that is a sign of rebellion. It's a sign of rebellion because those are two things that we need to keep us from the spirit of rebellion. So if he's got distance between us and the church and he's got distance between us and the pastor, then we are giving grounds for the devil to put rebellion in our life. And I'm telling you, rebellion is a soul killer. Amen. Now, I don't just go through what we talked about earlier about people getting here and not just staying at home watching service so we can have a better attendance or have a better bottom line on our budget. That's not what we're doing. Amen. But the psalmist said that, but as for me, in Psalm 73, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. In verse number 12, behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. And verse 14, for all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. I'm looking at all this, these people. They're, what's going on here? It seems like they're being blessed and they're wicked. And they don't go to church, and they seem like they're doing okay. So I can kind of stay home, and I can do okay. And we're not careful. We can get into that little mindset. Well, well, pastor seems to really still love them, and they never come to church. Yeah, because I love all of you. Pastor seems to give them people that don't come to church more attention than the ones that do come to church. Well... And when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. In verse 17, though, the psalmist said, until I went to the house of the Lord. There is something about coming into the house of the Lord that it doesn't matter what's been working on you during the week. And that's why it's ever so much more important. And that's the reason why we kind of paused and had a little different service Sunday morning. Because we cannot afford to come into the house of God and just kind of casually coast through our worship time. It's got to be an atmosphere. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. Because if we're not careful, we will introduce a place that is comfortable for the spirit of rebellion. And it'll kill us. We don't need a spirit of rebellion in the church. And I know Brother Jordan already mentioned it. I think we can all agree we're living in the end time. And everything in our world, if we were to look at it 
as from a biblical standpoint and look at it kind of how it's all being set up in every area in our government. Not just in D.C., but in our state and even in our local government. These new little things just get introduced and passed. And the spirit of the Antichrist is at work. Everywhere. Not just in the quote-unquote swamp, but even right here in Boonville, Mississippi. I said the spirit of the Antichrist is at work. And if we're not careful, we'll let it get a grip on our life. And this year especially because... If we've noticed anything about this year, it has revealed the condition of our hearts. We don't like to look at it like that because it causes us to do a little self-examination. And when we do self-examinations, we know us better than anybody else. And we find things that, oh, I can just hide that. And we refuse to go to the doctor. And you'll end up letting something that could have been treated so easily be the thing that kills you. All because when we're doing those self-examinations, we're stubborn. Well, what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying don't let those little things, as the word of God is going forth, don't say, well, that's not for me or he don't have any business talking they're getting in my mail like that, he, whatever. Because that introduces a place for the spirit of rebellion to. Amen. So whenever the word of God goes forth or whenever pastor gets up and, and, it's, and, I, and, I, and I have to, I, just honestly, can I just be real with you? My flesh, like after Sunday morning, like the Lord moved Sunday morning through the word and the preaching. But I, just as a pastor, because I love people and because I, I sometimes I get, whenever I have to do something or I feel like i got to do what I did Sunday morning and stop the service and go on to the, the preaching and all that, it makes me sick in my stomach. It really does. I hate that. Like, should I even done that? No, because I know what the Spirit of the Lord was prompting me in the moment. And, and so I can't look back and ha- let doubt creep in. We got to be obedient to the word of God and to the spirit of God where we are, when we are, and say, God, I don't, if I see something, I need to go ahead and fix it. Right. Amen. And so we talked about it, the first lesson, this being a surgery, an operation. Don't, don't put off an operation that God can take care of you today. Amen. You don't have to wait till Sunday to get operated on. You can let God do some cutting on you tonight. Let this word that's sharper and is quicker and is powerful, let it, let it work on you tonight. Amen. The devil knows he's got a limited time. And so that's why he's unleashed this spirit of rebellion. Look, I'm serious. Look across our nation. I know we don't see it as much here in Mississippi, but look, I mean, look, look across. Let's see what's going on in some of these bigger cities. It's rebellion. Rebellion. And this is why Sister Tina and our kids, we, we got to start teaching our kids, Brother Tyler and Sister Katie, with our youth, because there is, they, there's, this world is teaching our children. That there's a, somebody had a little picture of a children's book about gay couples trying to teach our children ABCs. It's called the Gay BCs, a children's book. I'm telling you, we got to be serious about this time that we're living in. And all this respect or disrespect for authority, we need to make sure we set an example. Amen. Because the devil doesn't, he doesn't want there to be revival in this end time. He knows he's got a short amount of time. And here's what we got to know about rebellion. Everybody say rebellion. It's usually not going to look like rebellion. I'm just kind of following the law. You know, it's legal now. I can buy that marijuana, smoke it. <laughs> I can go in me Toros and get me a tall one. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Glass of tea, that's right. 
A glass of tea, that's right. That's exactly what that means. Amen. But we're living in a day and age. Think about this. Where laws are starting to contradict the word of God. Whereas we were a nation that was founded upon the principles of the word of God. And morality used to come from this right here. But now we're living in a day where there's agendas. That's anti-Bible. And anti-God. And so we've got to know it doesn't matter what D.C. says. It doesn't matter what the Supreme Court said. Or even what our local officials here in Boonville say. We're not trying to be rebels. But, but uh, hear me. But if, if it goes against the word of God, I'm going to rebel against the, the government and not rebel against this word right here. Just because it's legal for men and women to sleep together and live together without being married doesn't mean it's right. Just because it's legal for a man to marry a man or a woman to marry a woman doesn't mean that it's right. And doesn't mean there don't still need to be somebody say something about it. Oh. See, we live in a world, I'm telling you, rebellion is even getting in the church because now we've got religious organizations that are putting people that are gay and lesbian in leadership. You say, Pastor, you record. I don't care. There needs to be a voice of reason from the Word of God in this hour that we live that wrong is still wrong, and there needs to be somebody say something about it. Or rebellion just feels at home. It's part of life. Well, now. Y'all know me enough to know now, and I don't have to qualify this stuff, but I'll just make this statement. Y'all know we love everybody. Amen. Amen. You, you, there might be people here every service that are dealing with some of these things that I just mentioned, and that's okay. We want them to come here. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Just like if you're liars, we want you to come here as a liar. Yeah. If you're a gossiper, we want you still to come to church. Yeah. It's still sin, yeah. but I promise you, I know it's cold outside and it kept some people at home. But if, if every one of the things I just listed kept everybody at home, it would be, well, might be doing a Bible study from home. We, gotta <laughs> we want you, what are you saying? We want you here. You need to be here. Doesn't matter what's going on in your past or what's going on in your present. Doesn't matter if you smell like alcohol, just took some drugs or something. Come on to church. I'll never forget in Omaha, we were there. Uh, we picked up a lot of homeless people, and we picked up this. I told you about the guy that stole my guitar. I don't know. He may be watching this. Now. I don't know. I want my guitar back. <laughs> but anyhow, had him over for Bible study one night, and he was a great, he was a great musician and singer, and he was, he was playing my guitar and singing. And he's like, I was like, man, take it back with you to the shelter. And he said, you sure? I said, yeah. And so... Uh, Yeah, but anyhow, he showed up to church Sunday uh, before all this. He showed up, he was going to sing a special, and, and so Brother Tony asked me, he said, uh, is so-and-so good to sing a special? I said, mm. I think he's been drinking a little bit. You can smell it. And uh, now, again, this was a church plant. And then Brother Tony might get on to me if I share this with y'all, but he won't watch this, and y'all won't share it with him. So, <laughs> But anyhow, he let that guy get up there and sing that Sunday morning. Joker had alcohol on his breath. Uh, but I said I'd say this. Take it for what it's worth. But the Spirit of God began to move as praises went up from a dude I'm not going to call him an alcoholic. I'm going to say that smelled like alcohol. So y'all look at me like I'm crazy. Because we live in such a polished, professional church culture. But we're living in a day where we got to do everything we can to reach some people and to give this presence and the spirit of God an opportunity to make a difference in somebody's life. And it may not always look like it's always look. And what it, but we got and don't take me out of context. And I, but I'm going to tell us that we got to be careful that we don't dismiss the anointing that God has on some people. 
It's all right. Well, I got to get back in my notes here. Amen. We we got to get back to this word right here. Our cues for morality don't come from the world. How we are, our morality compass, or our compass of morality, it comes from this word right here. And will always come from this word. Amen. We're going to be accused of rebelling from somebody. I'd rather the world call me rebellious than I had God call me rebellious. I'd rather that group of friends call me a rebel against the way they live their life than for me to have to look at God and him look at me and say, hmm, you know better than that. It's rebellion. It's knowing what God wants me to do and still choosing to do something else rebellion knowing what God wants me to do but still choosing to do something else refusing to do what God wants me to do that's why James said therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin I'm telling you this is something serious it's very serious and we can look at all these people in the Bible all the way from Adam all the way to uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all of them, Peter. We can look at any, pretty much anybody in the Bible. And we can look at me, we can look at you, and we can look at all of us. And all of us have dealt with rebellion at one point in our life. Some may even now, maybe. We've all had to deal with rebellion in our hearts. We all have areas where we have chosen not to do what we know to be right. For whatever reason, whether it's pride or whether it's just whatever it is, at the end of the day, it's rebellion. And we could probably take it a little step further and say that most of us know more than what we're doing when it comes to the lifestyle that we live. Well, at the end of the day, it's called rebellion. Somebody say rebellion. Rebellion is very serious. Somebody say rebellion is serious. It's not just some little thing. It's a big deal. It's a big thing. Amen. There's no heart that's harder for God to reach or a church to reach or a pastor to reach or for anybody to reach than somebody that's just rebellious. And so we get to Numbers chapter 16, and Moses and Aaron, they led the children of Israel. We talked about this, 2 million people on a journey from Egypt to the borders of the Promised Land. It was a 300-mile journey. took them 16, 18 months, 12 months of that. They were in Mount Sinai. And so a four- to six-month journey is all it was. But their jealousy and their murmuring and complaining and their doubt and their rebellion caused something that should have been just a short journey become a lifetime trip. Amen. I got to skip ahead. Everybody say rebellion serious. Another thing that we need to know about rebellion is that rebellion exists in every one of our hearts. Look at your neighbor and say, you got rebellion in you. <laughs> it exists in every one of us. Number 16, verse number 1. Now Korah, the son, listen to this, the son of Izar, the son of Koath, here's one we'll recognize, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, and the sons of Peleth, the sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. Everybody say Levi. Everybody say Reuben. Two founders of the 12 tribes of Israel. Verse 2 says that they, were, they rose up before Moses together with some of the sons of Israel, 250 leaders of the congregation, chosen in the assembly, men of renown. Everybody say renown. They're not troublemakers. They're not outcasts. They're not untrained. They're not ignorant when it comes to who they are. They're noble, respected. Men of renown, and they're about to rebel against God, against the man of God, and against the ways of God. A good people. And that same seed can be in the heart of every good person that's here tonight. 
every good person that's watching. That same seed, if we don't kill it, it will manifest itself in the way that we treat the word of God that's even going forth tonight. The rebellion is serious. Everybody say it's serious. I mean, it can be anybody. And it has a lot of sources. Again, we don't just wake up in the morning and say, hey, I want to be a rebel today. I'm just not going to do anything I'm told to do today. I'm not going to do anything God wants me to do today. Verse 3 says this in number 16. And they gathered themselves together. Everybody say they organized it. They gathered themselves together against Moses, against Aaron, said unto them, Ye take too much op upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift you up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. That verse started with something that we got. They assembled together. They were unified. But just because there's unity doesn't mean it's right. I'm going to say that again. Just because it's unity doesn't mean it's right. Because a whole group of people unified around an idea and be totally wrong and be in rebellion. And that's what happened here. They, they were organized. They were thought out. And that's the way rebellion in the church is. It always going to seem like the right thing to do. But be careful coming against the anointing of God. And the church said, amen. The argument was, who are you to lead us? You're just another one of us. Who are you? You're just another man. And here's the deal. And this is not just true in the church, but this is true in every area of your life. Whenever you think that somebody else is not qualified to lead, you usually feel like you're the one that's qualified. To. I've had to deal with this as a pastor in ministry, whenever putting people over ministry sometimes. Again, I've been pastoring long, and I've been pastoring here, so I've had to deal with some stuff since I've been pastoring where somebody feels like that somebody else shouldn't be doing that what they're doing. And you, at the heart of it, it's rebellion because they feel like they could probably do a better job. Nobody wants to talk about it like that, but it's rebellion. It's what happened right here in, in number 16 where Korah, they gathered them together and said, hey, hey, who are you to lead us? When, whenever we think that somebody else is unqualified, it's on the other side of that is we're thinking that we're the ones qualified. But here's the deal you got to realize, that if you was the leader, somebody would rebel against you too. And everybody's not going to do what you want them to do either. Well, it's a spirit. And here's what we got to understand about all this. We are all equal, but we're not the same. I said we're equal, we're just not the same. And if we can get a hold of this, it'll help get that spirit of rebellion off of us. Because Moses was uniquely called by God to be the deliverer. He was used by God. He was appointed by God. And these other good men were saying that, hey, I, we're equal with you, Moses. And they were right. In one sense, they are equal with Moses. It's just that they're not the same as Moses. They were wrong in what they meant when they said that to Moses. And so they, they confused that, that equality with his being the same. And it's different. Just because we're equal doesn't mean we're the same. It's quiet. Let me say it like this, you're equal with your boss, but you're not the same as your boss. Right? Wives are equal with their husbands, but they're not the same. If you're in school, you're equal with your teacher, but you're not the same. We're equal as followers of Christ, but we're not the same as our elders. God appoints and places people over us, and some are leaders and some are followers. Everybody say equal, but not the same. And so Cora and that little club he put together, and I'll pause here and say, we got to be careful that we make sure that we're never that person that makes the phone calls and gets that little group together. Oh. And the church said amen. But Korah, this little group of people, they were equal with Moses, but they were not the 
the same as Moses. And to suggest such is rebellion. It's a soul killer. Let me say it like this, and I know it's a little bold, but we need to get this tonight. God doesn't dwell where there's rebellion. His spirit cannot be unified with rebellion. And so if, if there's a spirit of rebellion that we allow to stay attached to us and stay attached to, to the, the people of God, then God will move on down to a church down the road or, and work through them what he was, his will was to work through us. Now, again, his kingdom is bigger than one church, so don't, don't take me out of context. But I'm telling you that God has more for us, and rebellion will push God away from us. And that's why, and I'm getting ready to close, but that's why in Pentecost we put so much emphasis on 1 Corinthians chapter number 11 and talking about hair. Say, Pastor boy, you going off your rocker now. Say, you talk, talking about rebellion. Here you are talking about hair. But hair is a sign of submission. It's quiet. But if I walk in here and my hair is long and i got to put it in a ponytail, number one, you should have a problem with that. <laughs> but number two, that's a sign that somewhere in my life I've got a spirit of rebellion in me. Or I'm ignorant of the word of God, which I'm not. Because I know 1 Corinthians said. But again, the same is true with women. This is, everybody say apostolic. And we still believe that women ought to have long, uncut hair. And the definition of long is uncut. And men ought to have short, cut hair. We believe that. It proves submission. Or it proves our rebellion. And I know we have a lot of new people in church, and we have people that may be watching this. And again, this isn't, just hang with me a minute. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. Let's look at what Paul said. Because no matter how we feel about it, we can't take away from the truth. And the church said amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image of the glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. Skip down to verse number 10. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Go to verse 13. Judge in yourselves. Is it comely? That a woman pray unto God uncovered. Doth not nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. Everybody say rebellion. Rebellion, rebellion is a soul killer. And guys can have hair down to their waist and... and that's okay. Again, we want everybody to come to church. Amen. Ladies, you can have hair shorter than mine. We want you to come to church. But that doesn't make it right. I'm going to say that again. Just because we choose something that goes against the word of God doesn't make it right. You say, well, I'm on my heart. In my heart, I don't see anything wrong with it. Be careful what you see in your heart because the Bible says your heart's very desperately wicked. And I can't control what anybody does in the pew, and I don't want to. But when it comes to ministry and leadership and platform, we still believe this. And, man, we got we to gotta make sure that we follow the word of God. And the church said amen. Y'all all right tonight? Let's all stand. Amen. They don't have to come back to the music. We'll have a word of prayer and get you out of here tonight. Everybody say soul killers. I'm going to give you six sources of rebellion. And anybody that struggles with rebellion will struggle with at least one of these six reasons. 
We already talked about one of them in the, one of the soul killers. It's jealousy. Everybody say jealousy. And jealousy will cause you to be rebellious. Delusions, thinking something that's true that's not true can cause you to rebel. Another thing that causes rebellion is ungratefulness. Just not grateful. God can take you out of a life of sin, and then all of a sudden we just push his commandments off to the side. We're just not grateful for the work he's done in us. Another, another thing, that the other reason why people rebel, and this most often affects people in the church, is stubbornness. Hard head. <laughs> Hey, a hard head's good for some things, but living for God's not one of them. Unless you're having a hard head against the devil. But if you hard-headed on the changes that God wants you to have in your life, it's rebellion. Sometimes disappointment. It's, hey, again, hurts real. Being done what we perceive to be done wrong, and those things happen to us, that's a very real feeling. Disappointment's real. And some people rebel against the things of God out of dis being disappointed. It's real, but it's rebellion. Another reason for rebellion is distrust. And any time any one of those things are present, jealousy, delusions, ungratefulness, stubbornness, disappointment, distrust, rebellion is sure to be right there. And we can never be more like the devil than whenever we're living with a spirit of rebellion. The Bible says rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. It's serious. And that's why we've got to get this out of our soul. Because we can't be holy and rebellious at the same time. And I want to be more like him, don't you? Amen. Can we just lift our hands right now? Amen. God, you are so good and so faithful. Thank you for your word. Thank you for an opportunity to get into even these things, Lord, that, that rub us, God, that really just challenge us. God, I pray, Lord, that we stay moldable, that we stay pliable in your hands, God, that we would not let hardness, Lord, cause us to turn you away. God, but that we would allow you to convict us, Lord. And as you convict us, Lord, I pray, God, that we would be willing to change. God, don't let us, Lord, be, be stubborn to you. Don't let us be stubborn to your word. God, I pray, Lord, that you would cut away anything that would cause rebellion in us. God, because we don't want to be like those good people that we read about in number 16. God, those are good people. Lord, we've got good people in this church. God, we've got good people in this community. God, I pray, Lord, that you would help us. God, to keep this spirit cut away from our soul because I know it will be something that will kill us. God, and it's not your will that any should perish, but Lord, help us all come to repentance, Lord, that we would live a life crucifying our flesh and casting out those spirits, Lord, that would try to hinder our walk with you. In the name of Jesus and the church said, amen. 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 God bless you. Anybody just want to just say it out loud? I don't want to be rebellious. I don't want to be rebellious. So, see, some can't even say it because you're being rebellious. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. I love you. Look forward to seeing you Sunday. Don't forget Bible quizzing tomorrow night at 630. And then uh, Sunday at 10 o'clock is our only service. We'll have our Christmas service, and we look forward to having you then. God bless you.